I really just have one question. What the heck happened to Twitter? So if you don't already know by now, Twitter was hacked in a massive way on Wednesday, July 15th. Big name accounts such as Kanye West, Elon Musk, Apple, Joe Biden for Pete's sake, Kim Kardashian, and countless other big name profile Twitter accounts with millions of followers were all hacked on Wednesday, somewhere between the hours of 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every single one of these accounts sent out a message saying something along the lines of, whatever amount you send to us in Bitcoin, we'll send back to you, but doubled. Now, naturally, this is a fishy message and we would hope no one would actually fall for this, but as I've come to realize, a lot of people aren't as smart as I thought they were when I was a little kid. So accounts were hacked and tweets were sent, but what else happened? That no one really knows, but here's what we do know so far. Just past noon Pacific Standard Time, a Twitter account called Binance tweeted out that in an effort to give back to the community, they were going to partner with an organization called Crypto for Health and give back 5,000 Bitcoin to the organization and the surrounding community. And there was a link in the tweet to donate. Shortly after that tweet was sent, other accounts such as Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett all tweeted something similar saying they wanted to give back to the community, they wanted to help the community, and anything that was sent to their Bitcoin account, they would double it and send it back to them. As crazy as it may seem, the Bitcoin account received $117,000 from people in the community thinking that this was a real partnership. And as for what else the hacker said on Twitter, that's where people seem to be on a different page. The Twitter support channel tweeted, we detected what we believe to be a coordinated social engineering attack by people who successfully targeted some of our employees with access to internal systems and tools. A social engineering attack just means that hackers uh, bribe their way or somehow coerce Twitter employees to giving them access to internal admin tools. That's all social engineering is. Then they later followed up and said, we know they use this access to take control of highly visible, including verified Twitter accounts and tweet on their behalf. We're looking into what other malicious activity they may have conducted or information they may have accessed and we'll share more here as we have it. Vice reportedly talked to two of the hackers who said they were given access to the Twitter admin panel through logins of Twitter staff. They then supposedly used that admin tool to reset the emails that were associated with each Twitter account, being able to change the passwords, log in, bypassing the two-factor authentication, and supposedly tweet on their behalf. Now, TechCrunch reported some of the same admin panel access but they think the hackers legitimately hacked into the Twitter admin panel and were not given any sort of logins. So that's what happened. But then another question remains of who is behind this and why were they willing to risk what they did for only $117,000? It doesn't seem like a good payoff. Lucky225, an account owner of someone who was hacked, said that he thinks the hackers were either bypassing or intercepting the SMS password reset or somehow going around it. Lucky said the account had a one-time password two-factor authentication turned on, but for some reason the hackers were able to bypass that authentication. If the social engineering of the Twitter employees rumor is true, they could have used that account access, changed out the password reset email, turned off the two-factor authentication, and then sent a password reset email. I've linked below in the description box this article that Lucky225 wrote detailing the descriptions and what times it happened. This is where I got some of my information from. Lucky said the, the account he owned never tweeted the same Bitcoin scam that other accounts tweeted, so he doesn't think they're the same hacking even though that his account got hacked just minutes prior to the rest of the people's accounts who got hacked. And the interesting thing is Twitter issued a statement on Thursday, July 16th, saying that they think some 130 accounts were hacked in this process, but only some of them were able to tweet out the Bitcoin scam. So it is possible that the account Lucky owned called Six was part of the same Bitcoin scam, but for some reason or the other, they weren't actually able to tweet out the Bitcoin scam and were able to just get into his account. A Twitter account named Shinji, I don't know how you say it, S-H-I-N-J-I, -I, was tweeting out pictures of the admin tools with the caption, follow at six, which is the account that Lucky owns that got hacked. Shortly after this account tweeted out the pictures of the admin dashboard, the post was taken down and his account was restricted. There are strong indications that the people behind the Twitter attack are notorious for sim swapping. Swim swapping is a form of crime that's gaining a popularity where hackers bribe employees at social media and phone companies into giving them access to different accounts. Once they have the access to the accounts, they can do whatever they want. It's just like they own their accounts. People who participate in sim swapping are obsessed with the OG or original gangster social media accounts. These are the accounts that have 
one, two, five, or six usernames. And having this username show some sort of stature or allure in the tech world because it shows you are part of an early adopter, you're early on the program, so you can get away with having a username like Jack or Six or Joe. Because there's so much allure and traction behind all of these shorter OG accounts, they're very attractive to sim swappers because they can be sold for a very high price in the underground market. A few days leading up to the attack, a few people on the SimSwap community posted a message saying that they were able to change the email of any Twitter account for a small fee of $250 or give them access to a Twitter account for $25 to $3,000. That seems pretty fishy to me two or three days before this massive attack happens. So that's what happened. There's some assumptions of who was behind it, but now what are the implications of this? It's too early to tell exactly what the goal of this scam was. Like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't seem worth the risk for only $117,000. With the power that they had, the accounts they had, they could have done much more damage. A question that is yet to be answered is whether or not all of the private direct messages from each one of those accounts were accessible to the hackers. Now that's 131 very high profile, very important people, and if their direct messages get leaked, now that could be a big thing for the political agenda, for stock markets, or something or the other. Now I'm thinking most of these people probably are not communicating with other people through Twitter direct messages, but you never know. But Twitter seemed to have thought of that because as soon as this attack happened, the ability to download your active user data is disabled for every single Twitter account. And as of this video, which is posted on Friday, July 17th, it is still unable to access uh, all of your data because if you can, you can go back and download all of your direct messages, the tweets you sent, what you search, and all of your Twitter data, which obviously Twitter does not wanting random people to have all of these all very high profile cases. Now on Wednesday evening, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, received a letter from a congressman asking him what happened, uh, what are the implications, basically what is the harm to Twitter and to America and did President Donald Trump's account get hacked? And if so, how, what can we do to stop this? Jack Dorsey is being asked to participate with the Federal Bureau of Investigation to do a full-blown research and investigation of what happened on Wednesday, how did it happen, what are the risks, how does this not happen in the future, and what other things can we do to keep Twitter and other social media accounts safe from hackings like this. There's no doubt that this was a crazy phenomenon. I've linked a couple of the resources down below in the description box where I got my information. I try to make sure that it is as trustworthy as it can be. I try not to make any allegations. Basically just explain, here's what happened, here's what we know, here's what we think could be happening, and that's it. So stay tuned on TechCrunch or Vice or other popular news articles in the tech world to figure out how the story is developing. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.